Hello there. Uh, today I want to show you one uh, very instructive game which uh, I think uh, in a great uh, manner demonstrates how the chess should be played, uh, how, how the, uh, the game develops, how to improve your pieces and how to look for pawn breaks and how to perform an attack uh, in the end. Uh, this game I found in one book, uh, it's played in uh, 1972. I will uh, link the game below with uh, the moves and uh, the exact name of the players because I don't want to butcher their names by pronouncing them. They are not, uh, at least to me, they are not very famous players. But um, of course they are both grandmasters and uh, the game is uh, on a very high level. And you can notice that this time I will be using my uh, physical board uh, to demonstrate the game. I don't know how it will be uh, visible, how it, it will be uh, maybe it's not uh, as transparent as uh, using uh, uh, Lich's uh, 2D board, but uh, okay, let's just uh, break the routine a, a little bit to do something different and please tell me in the comments uh, how do you like this uh, 3D uh, presentation. Okay, so a white in the game played e4, uh, black responded with uh, c5, so he's just uh, playing uh, Sicilian, uh, knight f3, uh, main line, knight c6, they are going for open Sicilian, uh, d4, uh, c takes d4, knight takes d4, and uh, well, this is the most most of the games in Sicilian start in this game, so this is um, just uh, open Sicilian, and uh, now there are several responses for it. And in this game, uh, white played e6, uh, going for, uh, we will see uh, what is called the uh, hotchdog formation. And so, uh, white response little dubious uh, knight uh, b5, uh, black just continues uh, his development, he's playing uh, d6, so now this is called a uh, hotchdog formation uh, structure, so this is uh, the, the, the pawn structure, and white now plays uh, c4, this is called uh, Marazzi bind, so when you have two, uh, two pawns on e4 and c4, uh, this is, called, this is uh, also a famous structure for white, so it's called uh, Marazzi bind, so we have Marazzi bind for white and hedgehog uh, for, for black, uh, very instructive uh, pawn formations from both sides. Uh, black continues his development, he's just playing uh, knight to f6, now attacking the e4 pawn, and uh, white uh, retreats his knight, uh, so he plays knight 5 to uh, c3, uh, just uh, protecting the, the pawn. Black continues his natural development, so uh, bishop to e7, uh, white does the same, uh, bishop to e2, uh, black castles, uh, white castles. Okay, now let's, uh, since I, I told you that this is an instructive game and this game shows you how to play chess, uh, this is the first instant you have to stop and think. So the first phase of uh, development of opening is open, so both, both side, uh, sides castled, and what, uh, what to do now. So what are the goals in the opening? Develop your pieces, protect your king, and uh, control the center. So black achieved all this. So uh, the, the king is uh, is protected, the center is controlled, he has this hotchdog formation, so you can see that mo uh, many center squares are under control, so he's playing in the center. And so what, what to do now? Now this is the very early stage of the middle game already, and uh, well, what you should do is to think how to improve your uh, list uh, active piece, so improve your worst piece. This is the general advice because now you, you can see this position. Uh, the, the the armies are are still far away from each other. There is no immediate contact, immediate clash. Uh, so in this phase of the game, uh, you should not think about uh, how to attack, how to provoke weakness, find weakness, but I uh, instead how to improve your pieces. And this is the first instructive moment because you have you you. Um, don't just go and, and crush your opponent if your pieces are not developed. And this is what is often seen in, in amateur games. So I think this is kind of instructive moment. So you have to think about what uh, piece in your, in your cap is uh, least uh, developed, is doing nothing. And this is uh, this uh, light square bishop, obviously. And you have now to think how to uh, develop this bishop. And here black plays uh, just simple b6 and he will uh, fianchetto to his, uh, his bishop. It's much better than to, uh, for example, play e5 and uh, allow the, the, this, uh, the, this nice hole um, in, in, your, in your camp which your opponent can make use of. So 
this hash dot formation is solid enough, you, you don't want to touch this, you're thinking about your, your least developed piece and you play just uh, b6 uh, with the intention to uh, develop the, the bishop. White does the same, so he plays uh, b3 here, uh, you develop your light square bishop, uh, b7, he also developed his bishop uh, on b2, and what now? Okay, now there is a uh, next stage in the game. What should you do now? Do now? So the, but there is no tactical shots, no no apparent weaknesses in, in a, the opponent's form, formation. So how to assess this position? What should you do? Well, again, you can, you can think about improving your worst uh, piece. So you, you can see these knights are very well placed, most active squares. This bishop is okay. He controls this long diagonal and it's, it's, it's okay. So this bishop is uh, totally restricted. You can see that all, all the pieces are restricting it and, and he doesn't do anything. So you, you can think about how to improve, improve this bishop. Again, if you move the pawn, you will just break your, your nice structure and you will uh, uh, produce new holes in your, in your camp. So you, you don't want to do this. And so how to, how to improve this bishop is by uh, moving the knight, playing the knight to d7, and now you have nice uh, opening for your bishop. And this, this, is, this is the idea. So what to do when there is nothing to do? Improve your worst piece. So this piece, you move knight uh, for uh, intending to improve your bishop. Okay. Uh, he plays uh, knight to a3, so he also develops his pieces. I'm not now. Uh, I'm now focused on the on the black side. I'm not commenting on the white uh, white moves. So we, we play as black uh, this game. So I will not uh, spend much time on, on his his moves. So it's a developing move. Okay. What now? In in the game, uh, black played uh, knight to c5. So this is very nice uh, square for the knight. Very nice outpost. He's now uh, putting pressure on uh, e4. Uh, e4 pawn and uh, well, it's, the knight is uh, very, very close to uh, your opponent's camp. So, by just 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 uh, to repeat the maneuver, so uh, uh, the the main intention is to activate this bishop by playing knight to d7. This bishop uh, has more activity, but now you can uh, even improve your your knight, so putting it closer to the center and uh, play the knight. And later on, you will activate your your bishop. You don't have to hurry. Uh, to, to rush to uh, to do this. Uh, queen to d2, developing move uh, from white, and now bishop to f6. So compare this constellation with this. So we, we had this uh, as, as black, and now we have this. So this is a great, great lesson in how to activate your pieces, how to think about making your pieces more, more active. And uh, this is what black, uh, black managed to achieve. Okay, um, white plays rook f to e1 here, and what now? So this is the third uh, moment in the game in which there is nothing to do, but you have to do something. Uh, you can think about maybe uh, tactics, removing the defender and pick up the knight, uh, pick up the pawn, but it doesn't work, because if you take, uh, he takes with the queen and now he's threatening uh, checkmate in one. And you cannot capture because you get checkmated. So this simple tactics doesn't work here. So what to do? What to do when all your pieces are developed on their best squares? So can you improve uh, pieces now? Not not much. All your pieces are, are greatly are placed on, on great squares. They are active. I mean it's it's almost a, a ideal setup. But uh, okay, you can maybe. Think about just connecting your rooks, moving your queen, but uh, why, why would you do it? This and uh, which which square of the queen is the best? It's not very clear. So the the recipe, the the how chess is played is once your all pieces are uh, developed and uh, are placed on their best squares, you have to think about pawn breaks. So this is very important concept. If your pieces are developed and you are developed and uh, everything is fine and your pieces are uh, on the best squares, then it's time to break the position. So to open the position, to look for possible pawn breaks and then your pieces will come alive uh, because they are placed on, on the very active squares and once the, the pawns are removed, once the break is made, then all your pieces will uh, just uh, flourish on the board. So. Now, at this stage of the game, when we have improved all our pieces, we are looking at pawn breaks. 
which pawn breaks are available uh, are available here well before obviously not because it's uh, sorry b5 it's it's not very well uh, it's uh, covered by, by by many pieces also this pawn break well, it, it obviously doesn't work it's it's covered by by everything so what pawn break uh, do we have well we have f5 in the future so we have to prepare this pawn break because this is the only break we have in the position and once we do this pawn break then we have all the active pieces and we can uh, start the attack so please notice what, what is uh, what is the uh, the recipe the, the the order of things so develop your pieces put your king to safety improve your pieces in in the possible most possible uh, most active uh, square squares and then look for pawn breaks and then after you perform the pawn breaks then you attack so don't um, don't just attack 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 before uh, you, you have everything uh, prepared in most of the games it uh, doesn't work it works if your opponent uh, allows you for some cheap tactics but this is how the chess uh, should be played so we are looking at, at the at the pawn breaks uh, here and we, we saw that uh, this this is the only pawn break allowed uh, by the position so we want so we have to prepare it so we have to, to move this bishop uh, in order to, to be able to to do this uh, pawn break and where to put the bishop well we, we don't want to put it on, on just some uh, illogical square and uh, black played uh, bishop to e5 here very strong move so bishop is even more active here than it was on, on f6 so it went from uh, being uh, totally inactive on e7 on active square f6 and now even more active on e5 and uh, this also calls for for example uh, f4 uh, for, uh, for, for white in, in which case you can just check and then make your pawn break or white can do something else in the game he did uh, bishop to f1 so uh, opening the, uh, this uh, activating this rook and also this bishop is uh, now participating in the defense of the of the king because uh, white al already senses that uh, the attack will be uh, here uh, very soon now everything is ready your pieces are uh, in the excellent squares and it's time to make a pawn break and start the attack so only at this moment black plays f5 very strong move with pawn break he takes c5 and now how to take of course you don't want to take with the pawn and, and uh, leave this uh, guy weak uh, you want to, uh, you have a semi-open f file and you want to uh, control it with your rook so uh, rook takes uh, f5 Knight to d1, now you can see that white is uh, focusing on the defense because the, the attack is coming. And what now? Okay, fourth lesson. How to, uh, how, to how to prepare the attack, let's say like this. Well, in order to prepare attack, you have to uh, create targets for the attack. And uh, here we, we see that uh, white has a solid pawn structure, uh, solid pawns and they are defended by, by his minor pieces and king. So you have to do something about this. You have to create some weaknesses here. If uh, there are no weaknesses in the position, then you have to create uh, weaknesses. And once you create weaknesses, then you will have targets for the attack. At this moment, you don't have any targets, so you have to create them. And this is why uh, Black uh, very, very geniusly played this move. Uh, so uh, queen to h4. And now he will provoke uh, white to, to do something. So now he's threatening checkmate in one, of course. And uh, in order to stop this, white has to make a pawn move. When you make a pawn move, uh, then immediately weaknesses are created. So he could maybe play uh, just h6, I suppose, uh, but uh, oh, sorry, h3, but he played uh, g3 here, which is logical because now, now he can activate uh, his bishop and also this moves come with the tempo and this is what black wanted so now suddenly there is a, there are two holes in the in the position or the white uh, this is not a solid as was uh, before the pawn move and uh, now black uh, has a clear targets of attack so f2 is target uh, h2 is target in the future and also the weak squares weak squares are weak and uh, the only defender of the uh, white squares is uh, this bishop and this bishop can be exchanged by, by his bishop. So 
Now there are pl plenty of targets, and now the strategy is clear. Remove the defender and uh, just focus on these two weaknesses. So you have now very clear uh, target for the attack. So the attack doesn't make sense if you don't have a target. So first you have to create target. It doesn't make sense to just um, uh, just run with your pieces on, on, the, on the enemy. You have to create weaknesses first, and this is what is done. So he uh, moves his uh, queen to f6, of course, because now we are, we are targeting f2. Uh, F2 weakness. White plays bishop to uh, g2. Okay, he, he he wants to cover his his uh, weaknesses on the on the light squares, and black just continues with his strategy. Now the strategy is very clear. We have to focus on the weaknesses. So uh, rook to f8. Now everything is focused on on this poor guy here on f2. Rook to b1 is played or protecting this bishop because you can see that this this bishop is attacked twice. And defended uh, twice as well, but uh, in, in this in this position, uh, these two pieces are uh, paralyzed, uh, protecting the bishop. So I guess white white wanted to overprotect the bishop uh, just to be sure. Okay, and now let's think about the, the <laughs> another lesson is in this position. So how to proceed with the attack? It looks like that white has everything covered. You have to think about in in this. Attack, what are the pieces which uh, can contribute to the attack from your side, and what are the pieces from his side which can give him some counterplay uh, chances? So, if you look at this bishop, dark square bishop, it doesn't do anything, uh, it doesn't do much in the attack because the dark squares are pretty well covered. So, you will not be attacking on the dark squares. So, this piece is not an attacking piece. So, you can trade it off because it will not uh, contribute to the attack. And on the other hand, this piece, this bishop, here can be very powerful. It's aiming at queen, at the king's side, uh, at, at everything on the board. And this bishop can uh, maybe in the, the future give him some prospects of counterplay. So this is why you need to exchange these bishops. So first, A, because it doesn't uh, participate in the attack. The attack will be done on the light squares. This is dark square bishop. And the second two, uh, prevent him from any chances of how to counterplay. So black uh, took the bishop and uh, white of course uh, took the bishop back. Okay, what now? Uh, well now we, we need to bring other pieces in the party. So we have these two knights which are on the queen, uh, queen side and you want them to participate uh, in the attack. This is one thing. And the other thing you want to exchange this light square bishop because this is the most important defensive piece uh, uh, in, the, in the white scab, so you want to remove this uh, bishop uh, in order to have uh, many weak uh, light squares in which you can attack. So, uh, in, in this position, uh, black played a knight to e5, uh, which is an excellent move because it achieves so many things. First of all, we have this clear objective, now we, we can uh, swap these bishops. So by moving this knight, we, we just attack the bishop. And um, another thing, we are also bringing this knight uh, closer to the to, to the party, and you can see that there are many nice squares, light squares, which can be used uh, for uh, this knight to go further in the in the attack. And now uh, black has to meet uh, many threats here. Uh, one threat is also just this fork, for example. It can so forking uh, the, these two rooks. There are another threat is uh, maybe to play just uh, knight to f3 and then uh, penetrate the position. So th there are many threats here and uh, white uh, needs to address them. So he plays a rook to e3. Now at least he's covering these two squares. There is no fork here. So, okay, he's, he's defending. Uh, black now exchanges the bishops. So no question uh, here. It, it is, I mean, it's the only defensive piece. You have to remove it. And this is why the movie, uh, this movie is played in the first place. So he takes back, and uh, now uh, the attack is just is just rolling. So uh, we have this uh, this f2 uh, pressured, and you want we want to make even more pressure on f2, and we want to bring our pieces closer to the enemy king. So uh, the move which uh, well, suggests itself is uh, knight to g4. Now uh, hitting this uh, pawn once again. Now it's attacked four times and it's only defended. It's also defended four times, but uh, well, it, it doesn't matter. It's a move which makes pressure and also 
um, it attacks the rook, and also it attacks this guy here, h2, h2 which is also a weak, a weak pawn. And you can also notice that, uh, well, this knight can very easily be brought in the, in the, in the game, and this knight is doing nothing. So, uh, black is essentially piece up in the attack. Uh, right now, he has to move his rook because it's under attack. And uh, now, I think this is called the principle of two weaknesses. So, uh, white has two weaknesses and he cannot cover them both. So, uh, th this he got covered. He has one, two, three, four defenders, one, two, three, four attackers. Okay. But what about this guy? It's attacked uh, once and defended once, and so black just played. I look to h5, targeting this weakness, and at this moment, uh, white uh, resigned the game. And I'll show you why why it's hopeless to, to fight, because there are only two ways in, in which he can uh, he can do something about this uh, this pawn, and one is to play h3. In this, in this case, uh, black just uh, gives check. Uh, black king uh, has to uh, has to move away, and now he can just pick up this pawn, and you can see that this is undefensible. Another way to uh, to stop this is to play h4 here, in this case again uh, queen to f3 check, and if uh, the king moves then uh, this knight can join the party, forking both rooks, so white will lose the exchange, but not, the, not just the exchange, but now you can see enormous pressure on the f2, and uh, well, it, it's just not uh, any defensible anymore. Okay, uh, thank you very much for watching. I hope you find this video uh, useful. In fact, I would advise you to go through this video several times and uh, maybe even pause uh, and uh, pause the video in the critical positions because I think uh, this game in an excellent way demonstrates how the chess uh, should be played. So you need to, to control the center, develop your pieces, put the king in safety, and then when the middle game comes, you think about how to improve your worst uh, pieces and once your, all your pieces are, are on, on their most active squares, then you look for pawn breaks. And after you, you make a pawn break, uh, then you create the weakness in your opponent's camp. And then you target the weakness with your pieces, which are um, already active and uh, they are ready to go. Thank you very much for watching. If you like this video, please click the like button, uh, subscribe to my channel, uh, share the video, leave the comment below. And I will see you very soon with more chess. Cheers.